welcome to this short time of reflection. I am the Reverend Karen Hendry and we worship alongside members and friends of Yoker Parish Church and Kelvin Side Hill Head Parish Church, both within the bounds of Glasgow Presbytery Church of Scotland. So wherever and whomever you are, as you turn for a moment away from other distractions, may the space in time and place which you have now set aside become for you a holy and gracious moment of holding and of wonder. I invite you to join in once again along with me as we light a candle together and we echo the unspoken words of our hearts for more light to shine into the unresolved situations and moments of our lives that weigh heavy upon us today. My light joined with your light and your light joined with mine. A sunrise in the making, a day breaking, a revelation near at hand. Inspire in our hearts, God, a desire to see you more clearly and know you more completely. Amen. I have always been one to follow the readings from the Common Lectionary. I do that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because I know that there will be other people in various Christian traditions around the world looking at the same lectionary reading as me. It therefore helps me to feel part of the worldwide church in solidarity with others. The second reason, and the one that I am more mindful of today, is that of by following the common lectionary readings, I am prevented from skipping over those readings that I don't feel comfortable with. If left to my own choosing, I would likely choose the readings that left me feeling warm and fuzzy and didn't present me with any challenge. God is good. Let's carry on in our own kind of way of thinking. And so here we are today. And for all those reasons, we now come to the reading that is set for today. There is no escape. It comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 21 to 26. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Jesus' stride 
is quickening. He has turned his face towards Jerusalem, the city that was both the centre and symbol of devise of power and privilege. At this point, Peter can only imagine what will lie in store for Jesus if he continues on such a path, taking his subversive ways of turning the powers that be on their head. Peter doesn't want his friend to come to any harm. Both Peter and Jesus are standing at a crossroads. Peter can feel it and Jesus knows it. And he doesn't spare Peter's feelings when he confronts him for getting in his way. I can imagine the sorry scene as Peter stood at the crossroads and thought about the journey ahead for Jesus and whether he would follow or try to stop him in his tracks. Consumed in such heavy thought, head bowed in shame, his heart broken and his hands stuffed into his pockets as he shifts his weight from foot to foot, wanting to walk, but not yet convinced of the direction in which to take. An old Hasidic saying comes to mind. Everyone must have two pockets, it says. In the right pocket, one must keep the words, for my sake, the world was created. And in the left, the words, I am but dust and ashes. Peter is compelled to see both the enormity of the life of purpose in Jesus' company and the humility in which such a life is lived. The cross, it seems to me, holds the same meaning. Before such a sign became a symbol of religion and salvation through Christ's death and resurrection, it also marked a moment such as the one Peter found himself in, where his path was not yet fixed and he could go either way, his own or that of Jesus's. This then is the moment when Peter discovers in his own life the truth of his statement from last week that Jesus is Lord. If Jesus is Lord, then the path that Jesus takes is most surely the way towards fullness of life for all creation and for himself. But it's a path that doesn't have its troubles to seek. We already know that from reading about Jesus's life and ministry. Uprooting injustice on any scale, be it the name calling that takes place in conversations or the othering of peoples because of their gender, ethnicity, religion or whatever division, device of illusion we try to erect between us comes at a cost to our present peace. Those of us who have more than we need, need to move over and allow those without to have what is rightfully their share, their fair share of enough food or water or wealth or opportunities for fullness of life. The world needs to stand at the crossroads of its life and linger there long enough to look and see where Jesus beckons us to follow him. We need to, we must, because the alternative is no life at all. Let us pray. God, as we turn to the left, we meet you. As we turn to the right, we meet you. 
You are there on the road ready to meet us. When we go on ahead and try to overtake you, slow us down in our tracks. Encourage us to stop a while and take in the view to see what's around us. To take in the long view and appreciate your call to be good stewards of all you have gifted to us in the short term. Help us to care for the environment for ecosystems and cultures that are fragile. Encourage us as we stop to look and take a closer look to hand to those with whom we share our daily lives. Help us to discern the expressions of need in the faces of those we love and know well and of those whom we have yet to meet on our journey, but of whom their plight has come to our attention through the world's headlines. Help us to walk their way in the love of Christ through prayerful action and thought. Show us the ways of justice and of mercy, peace and of hope for us all. Turn us away from every path we seek to travel alone and bring us back into company with another through you, following in your footsteps and letting you lead us on the path of your choosing. Bring us finally to the fullness of life everlasting. And until then, let us not be content with a lesser life as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for spending this time of reflection with me. And before we bring our time together to a close with the blessing, I remind you once again that this Sunday evening there is the call to pray in company with others, which takes place at 7 p.m. And you will find a suggested prayer to follow on the church social media pages. Meanwhile, I look forward to meeting you again over this platform next Sunday as we venture into a new month on September the 6th. Until then, look after yourselves and your loved ones. Be kind to them and to yourselves also through these difficult days. And as you live into God's blessing for you, I know God's blessing for you. May you be a blessing to others in return. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.